to the eternal, salutation to that reality from whom all beings proceed, by whom they are manifest, upon whom they depend, and in whom they become extinct. He is the knower, the knowledge, and all that is to be known. He is the seer, the act of seeing, and all that is to be seen. He is the actor, the cause, and the effect. Therefore, salutation to he who is all knowledge himself. Salutation to he who is supreme bliss itself, from whom flow the dews of delight, both in heaven and earth, and who is the life of all. Namaste. Welcome to this new series on Yoga Vashishta. I'm very happy to be able to present this. I'm so happy I can hardly speak. <laughs> because this gives me great bliss and pleasure. This Yoga Vashishta scripture is an extensive treasury of the entire teaching of Vedanta and especially Advaita. Although it spans the range of Vedic knowledge, yet the conclusion keeps coming through and is repeated again and again so that anybody who hears it has to get it. So on this auspicious occasion, beginning with the invocation, we're going to go through chapter by chapter the significant lessons and themes of Yoga Vashishta. So for this one, for this episode, I'm going to try to give some background and some general indication of the meaning and significance of the work. It's really quite profound. First of all, yoga vashishta means vasishta's yoga. Okay, the name, the yogi's name is vasishta, and the uh, possessive case is made by lengthening the first vowel. Uh, so vashishta means vasishta's yoga. Uh, just like um, Vasudev is Krishna's father. So Krishna is known as Vasudev. See, lengthen, lengthen the first vowel. In the same way, Vasishta's teaching is known as Vashishta, Yoga Vashishta. So now that we have that straight, <laughs> you're going to be hearing a lot of Sanskrit so get used to it. <laughs> this work is written as a supplement, or actually as a crowning glory of the ancient Ramayana. Ramayana, of course, is the history of Lord Rama. And Rama, in the story, when he was just a young boy, went on a pilgrimage to all the holy places. And when he returned, the great sage Vishvamitra came and asked for his help to kill some Rakshasa demons who were spoiling his sacrifices. Now, at first, Rama's father, Dasharat, was very, very reluctant to let him go. But then there was a conversation involving the sage Vasishta. And because of that conversation, Dasharat changed his mind. But that conversation 
is only summarized in the original Ramayana. So, later on, Valmiki, the original author, expanded that conversation. And the result of that is this Yoga Vashishta, <laughs> which is the, also known as the Maharamayana. Okay? <laughs> So, I hope that's all clear. <laughs> I'm just blissing out here because this is such a wonderful book. I can't tell you. For me, it means a great deal because it has confirmed many of the uh, realizations and insights I have had by means of sadhana and direct perception that were not covered in any other scripture. I'll give you an example. In the first part of book three, there is a narration of what is called the Bhu Mandala. The Bhu Mandala is basically the overall cosmology of our particular universe, the Brahmanda. So in another work, which I studied a long time ago, the Bhagavat Purana, or Srimad Bhagavatam. This is explained as if it's reality, physical reality, without any qualification. And, of course, it completely contradicts modern science. So a lot of people, I remember at the time when that book came out, a lot of people left the temple, a lot of disciples quit their guru because he was saying something that didn't make any sense to them. And I thought, well, this is strange. Everything else that he's written has been in harmony with modern science. So why this is suddenly so different? And I said, there must be a reason for it. It must be the view of the universe seen from the subtle body, not the gross senses, but the subtle senses of mind, intelligence, and so on. Pure consciousness. Huh? So, it turns out in the third book of Yoga Vashishta, there is a similar narration of the Bhu Mandala. However, in this narration, the description is given, it is a result of astral travel in the subtle body and the perception of subtle senses and what is seen is basically the fourth dimension. So this totally vindicated my earlier insight which was not supported in any scripture that I knew at the time. And that's only one. There are many, many, many things like this. So one of the things I'd like to do in this video is to narrate some of the wonderful effects and qualifications of this scripture uh, to motivate you to study it. The effect of Yoga Vashishta, Vishwamitra said, Rama, now it is appropriate that you have your mind properly purified from its doubts as it was done with Shuka, the son of Vyasa. So, the effect of this scripture, Yoga Vashishta, is to purify our minds from their doubts. And the story is, Shuka, Shukadev, was the son of Vyasa. Vyasa means divider. And it was Vyasa who divided the Vedas into four the Rik, Sama, uh, Astarva, and Yajur Vedas. So because of this, he was in a position to have at his fingertips all Vedic knowledge, and he passed that knowledge on to his son while his son was still very young. So Shukadeva attained enlightenment very early in life, but on account of his tender age, he had some doubts as to whether his insights were actually the ultimate. First, he went to his father, Vyasa, 
And Vyasa simply repeated the essence of what he had instructed him before. So Shukadeva was still doubtful in his mind whether this was really the ultimate knowledge. So therefore, Vyasa said, you go to Janaka. Janaka, King Janaka, the father of Mother Sita, who later on became Rama's wife. Janaka had become enlightened in his harem. <laughs> it's described in the Kaivalya Navanita scripture that he was in his harem, enjoying with his beloveds. And afterwards, he heard the singing of the Siddhas uh, in the sky. And because of the things that they sang, he was thrown into a deep reverie and he went into isolation and simply thought about this, contemplated, meditated for weeks. And as a result, he attained complete enlightenment. So Vyasa told Sukadev, you go to Janaka. Janaka will set you straight. So he did. <laughs> And after that, Shukadeva had no more doubts. He went up on a high mountain and meditated for a long time and finally completely merged into the Supreme Brahman. But what else? Vasishta says, O sage, I will perform what you have commanded me to do without fail. For who, though mighty, can refuse to perform the requests of the good and wise. I will destroy the mental darkness of Prince Rama and others by the light of knowledge, just like we dispel the gloom of night by the light of a lamp. So Rama was feeling some doubts. He was not sure at all about this world and his position in it. He was not at all sure of the ultimate knowledge and the deliverance from material existence. He was having so much doubt that it was impossible for him to continue his normal duties. So, of course, King Dasharat was very concerned. But Viswamitra basically ordered Vashishta to give this knowledge to Rama and to remove his doubts. So it not only removes <laughs> Rama's doubts, it removes our doubts as well. And so you should really hear this scripture and read it for your own enlightenment. So we have given, and you can see down in the, the description of this video, we have given this first book of the Yoga Vashishta for you to read. Uh, this is like your homework, your reading, <laughs> reading assignment, because otherwise it will be very hard for you to follow the discussion in this video and the subsequent episodes. So please read that before you watch the next video. And of course, I'll remind you in the beginning of the next video, <laughs> just in case you haven't. So I want to leave you with one more shloka. This scripture is easy to understand and ornamented with figures of speech. It is a poem full of flavors and embellished with beautiful similes. One who has slight knowledge of words and their meanings may be self-taught in it, but he who does not understand the meanings well should learn from a pundit. After hearing, thinking about and understanding this work, one has no more need to practice austerities or meditation, repeating mantras or performing other rites. A man requires nothing else for the attainment of his liberation. By deep study of this work and its repeated perusal, a man attains an uncommon scholarship and purification of his soul. So this is the result of studying this great work. And we invite you to continue with us in this great attempt to reach the essence 
of self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum. Karunar Navamai Karadakadinalgum Aruna Chalashivam Yidam